Hi, thank you so much. We are tuning back in today to part C of Max Licato's book and Randy Frazzi's book, The Story, based on the Bible, written as one continuous novel. And uh, you have turned into part C. We have been reading chapter 28, New Beginnings. And we're going to jump right back into where we left off. If you have your books, please, we're open to page 397, right at the top, talking about Peter and John and what they have to say and what the um, what the, the Israelites, the rulers of that day, had to say. And this is where we're going to pick up. Let's keep reading. It says this. I'll just back up and just read the bottom of page 396. The apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have, fulfill, you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than human beings. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed and hanged on a cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit. When God has given those whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were furious and wanted to put them to death. But the Pharisee named Gam Gamaliel, Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed the Sanhedrin, Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Some time ago, Theodos appeared, claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed. All his followers were dispersed, and it came to nothing. After him, Judas, the Galilean, appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed, and all his followers were scattered. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone, let them go, for if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. His speech persuade them. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. They ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. I think about that when they flog Jesus, what that's like. That's just so terrible. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing. I'm shaking. Rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Growing movements created logistical nightmares as hundreds, then thousands said, je said yes to following the resurrected Jesus. They gathered together full of joy and needs. So who would run the errands, distribute food, clean the dishes, and make sure everyone had name tags? For these important service jobs, the 12 apostles chose a small corpse of servers, considered to be the first deacons among them, was a man, and among them was a man described as 
full of God's grace and power. His name was, St was Stephen. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. Opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the free of the free men, as it was called, synagogue of the free freedmen, as it was called. Jews of Cyrene and Alexandra were all as well as the provinces of Silica and Asia, who began to argue with Stephen. with Stephen, but they could not stand up against his the wisdom the Spirit gave him as he spoke. Then they secretly persuaded some men to say, we have heard Stephen speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They produced false witnesses who testified, this fellow never stopped speaking against the holy place and against the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses, has, Moses handed down to us. All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Then the high priest asked Stephen, are these charges true? Stephen's answer to the, this question came from in the form of a Jewish history lesson about God's great story of redemption. Then Stephen spoke of the, relig of the righteous one, Jesus. You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. Let's read that again. You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. You have, you who have received the law that has, that was given through angels, but have not obeyed it. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at their feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. And Saul approved of their killing him. The witnesses laid their cults on a man named Saul, and Saul approved of killing him. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. 
those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and pro proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. Excuse me? So is there was great... Hi! Hey, is this your guys's? No, it's not. Oh, okay, I'll take it away. No worries. Have a super day. Yeah, you as well. Take care. Thanks. Oh, that's fun. Okay. Um, when the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any there who belonged to the, to the way, yeah, to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless they, they heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could not see anything. So they led him by hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind, and he did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Taras named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him and restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles for their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized and after taking some food, he, reg he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once, he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on this name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. 
After many days had gone by, there was a conspiracy among the Jews to kill him. But Saul learned of their plan. Day and night they kept close watch on the city gates in order to kill him. But his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. When he came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples. But there, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was really a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul, on his journey, had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him. And now in Damascus, he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He talked and debated with the Hellenistic Jews, but they tried to kill him. When the believers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tar Tarsus. Then the church, then the church throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened. Living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit it increased in numbers. Most of the new Christians were Jewish, but God's story of good news was for everything. Things had to change. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian Regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord, he replied. The angel answered, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa and bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon, the tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. About noon the following day, they were on their journey and approaching the city. Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat and while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles and birds. Then the voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure and, or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time, do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. While Peter was wa wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out, asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you, so get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Peter went down and said to them, I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? The men replied, We have come from Cornelius, the, cent the centurion. He is a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel 
told him to ask you to come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be his guests. The next day, Peter started out with them and some of the believers from Joppa went along. The following day, he arrived in Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up. Stand up, he said. I am only a man myself. While talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, You are well aware that it is against the law for a Jew to associate or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. I really want to read that for today, for September 2021, what's going on in our world in Canada. And I'm going to read it again. It is against our law for a Jew to associate or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. Peter went on to say he realized that God doesn't show favoritism, but invites people from every ethnic group and nation to accept the gospel through Jesus the Messiah. As Peter was explaining the gospel message and the first ever Gentile audience was responding with faith and repentance, something amazing happened. The gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out on them as it had been on the Jewish believers on the day of Pentecost. This is incredible. That is our hope. The chosen people were the Jewish people, but now the Holy Spirit is being poured out on the Gentiles there. At the same time the church was growing, it was also factoring, or it was also facing persecution from Herod Agrippa. I, the grandson of Herod the Great, who reigned when Jesus was born, and nephew of Herod Antipas, who had John the Baptist beheaded. Oh no. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four, by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between, the sol between two soldiers bound with two chains and, and, sentries, and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals, and Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. Wow, the angel is springing Peter from prison. And the angel told him, Peter followed him out of prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came out to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself and they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. 
When this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary and mother of John, who also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. Peter knocked at the outer entrance, and a servant named Rhoda came to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed, she ran back out, opening it and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. You're out of your mind, they told her. When she kept insisting that it's so, they said, it must be his angel. But Peter kept knocking, and when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and all the other brothers and sisters about this, he said, and then he left for another place. In the morning, there was no small commo there was no small commotion among the soldiers to what had become of Peter. After Howard had a thorough search made for him and did not find him, his cross examined he cross examined the guards and ordered them to be executed. Then Herod went from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there. He had been quarreling with people of Tyre and Sidon. They now joined together and sought an audience with him. After securing the support of Blastus, Blastus, a trusted personal servant of the king, they asked for peace because they had depended on the king's country for their food supply. That's Oh, that's not good. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his war royal robes, sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, This is the voice of a god, not a man. Immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God continued to spread and flourish. The end of this chapter says this, Saul and his mentor Barnabas spent a year ministering. Re remember that. Saul and his mentor Barnabas spent a year ministering to the first largely Gentile church at Antioch, where the believers were called Christians. From there, the Lord called them to missionary service. Saul and Barnabas accompanied at, the, at first by John Mark, who was Barnabas's cousin and who would later write the Gospel of Mark, began traveling and proclaiming Jesus throughout Asia Minor. It was also during this time that Saul got a name change to Paul. Saul's name was changed to Paul because God's spirit was leading them. Saul, now Paul, and his colleagues boldly spoke about Jesus everywhere they went. Little did they know they would have to endure little did they know what they would have to endure for the good news. I thank you so much. Thank you for letting me speak boldly and read this chapter. We are at the end of chapter 28. Come right back. We're going to read again now part D and I'm going to start chapter 29 Paul's mission. And I'll go through the questions and answers as well. Thank you. See you soon.